All right, guys, so now that we have the RS links and the Studio 5000 downloaded, now let's start communicating with our PLC. Uh, so you'll see here that I have a standard USB to USA cable here, uh, and I've got the PLC turned on. And I'm going to go over here to RS links and open up that guy. Next step I'm going to do is I'm going to go to communications and click on RS who. Okay, here you can see that uh, I've got the USB connection here, and I'm able to see my PLC. If in fact the PLC was turned off, then the USB connection disappears. It's gone. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to close this here. Let's see if it comes back on. If I just turn it back on, it usually takes a little bit of time. And sometimes I have to um, reopen RS Hue. So it doesn't seem to be coming in. So I'm going to click the X, go to communications, RS Hue. Still not there. <laughs> It will eventually turn on. Beauty, there she is. So it takes about 30 seconds to, uh, to come in. Okay, there's the USB and there's my PLC. Beautiful. Okay, let's minimize this guy. Let's open up Studio 5000. Uh, we're just going to create a new project here. Uh, our PLC is the 1769 L. 24ERQBFC1B. So we're going to open up this guy. I'm just going to put in uh, like test project or something like that. I think that was what I was calling my previous one. Okay. We'll hit next. You'll see that I'm using uh, revision 33. Okay. So I'm going to hit finish. That one already exists. So I'm going to replace it. Okay, so now that we have our Studio 5000, we can simply go here to the drop down menu and go online. Uh, but I'm going to go here to communications, go to who active, and now I can see my USB connection. If this was smaller, I could just hit the plus beside. And there's the, the te test project that I have. If I open that guy up, uh, double click it, I guess, uh, then you can see that I've got my uh, discrete IO, analog IO, and my counters there. Okay. So I'm going to go back to uh, the USB and I'm going to uh, download the program that I have onto the PLC. Okay, so I'm clicking download. Okay, looks good. Controllers in remote run mode. Uh, the mode will be changed to remote program prior to download. So I hit download. So we don't have anything in our program yet. We're just basically downloading our hardware configuration at the moment. Done down, downloading, change the controller mode back to remote run. Sure. Okay, so we're in remote run now. And now let's see if we can actually um, look at our inputs here. So let's go to uh, our main program, main routine. There's our main routine, excellent. Okay, and we wanna to go to controller tags. So up here in the left-hand side, Top left hand side, controller tags. I'm double clicking on those guys. Okay, and I want to look at uh, my local inputs here, right? So local uh, colon one colon i for my inputs. And now let's see if we can see the, the status of the bits here. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to flip each sequential input here. So this is input zero. Uh, so we should see that change state there. Beautiful. So I'm looking right here at the data, I'm looking right at that bit right there. Okay, so you can see that that changes to a one for input zero. Input one is the next one right here. So there's input one, input two, input three. Okay, so we can see that all of our inputs are now coming in and any ones up to uh, the second word here. Cool, so I got all these inputs that are coming in. Beautiful. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our outputs. So again, we're not communicating over the Ethernet at the moment. We're just communicating uh, over the USB. Uh, and it really took nothing to start to communicate with it, which is nice. We don't have any proprietary cables that we have to use, right? It's just a standard uh, USB to USA. Okay, let's look at the outputs. So I'm looking at uh, local 1.0 for my outputs there. Okay. If I wanted to open these guys up, so I could have done the same thing over here as well. Um, let me just show you that. So I can show you the individual bits here, right? So you can see these individual bits coming in as I change the status of the switches here. Okay. And then if we look at our outputs, 
then it looks like they're all zeros at the moment. Uh, but the cool thing about this program is that I can force this to a, uh, to a one by just changing this zero to a one. Okay. And when I hit, uh, enter, then you'll see that one of the LEDs turns on. Beautiful. Okay. Hard to see, but that LED just came on for input zero. Okay. If I wanted to do, um, I don't know, random one, let's do, uh, output. I said input, but I meant output, output five there. So let's change that to a one. So we'll make that true. Okay. And as soon as we do that, we see the next LED turning on. Okay. It looks like they stay on until I force them back to a zero. So that LED just turned off. And when I turn the next one from a, a one to a zero, the, um, the output zero will then be false and I'll be able to turn it off. Not a zero one, a zero. Cool. Excellent. So we've been able to communicate over the USB. Um, but most of the time we're going to be talking over ethernet. Um, so let's see how to connect up to the ethernet port now. Okay, so in addition to the USB connection, we've also got the Ethernet connection right here. This is going from our this port on our PLC down to the back of our desktop. So we've got to set up the IP address for our PLC. Um, that is most likely done if you're already in the in the lab. But this, if you're following through on the YouTube channel, um, then we need to set up the IP for our PLC and create a stationary IP for our computer. So uh, let's do that now. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to reopen the, uh, the RS links. So double clicking on this guy, we're going to communications. Now, again, we, we have the connection there for the USB. So we're going to RS who, okay. We can see our USB connection here. We're going to open that up and then we're going to click on this unit here. And I want you to right click and go to module configuration. Okay, once we click on that, then we're going to go to port configuration. Okay, and what I want to do is, like if you're following through on the YouTube channel, then um, let's create an IP address for the PLC. So we're going to do 192.168.1.10, and our subnet mask, which may come in right away, is 255.255.255.0. Okay, so keep in mind, watch these three are key 192, 168, and 1, because we're going to make the computer the same as that. Okay, and we've just arbitrarily chosen our PLC to be uh, 1.10. Okay, we'll hit OK. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change our Ethernet settings here. So we're going to come down here either to your internet connection here. So I have my Wi Fi connection. If I right click on that guy, I can open up the network and internet settings. I can also come over here to the start menu, click on this guy, go to the settings, and then open up network and internet settings. Okay, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to change the adapter options. So I'm going to click on that guy. And then I've got my ethernet, my LAN, and my Wi-Fi here. So I, I want to change the ethernet connections. So I'm going to right click on this guy and go to properties. Okay, it's just prompting me to put in my password here. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the uh, Internet Protocol version number four, TCP IPv4. So click on this bad boy right here. Double click on actually, actually. And normally it's set to get an IP automatically from the Internet. But we want to create just a stationary IP. So we're going to click on this guy. Use the following IP address. We're going to put in 192.168. Dot one. Okay, so same three numbers as we had for the PLC. And then just let's arbitrarily do uh, one, two, three. Okay, if I click on the subnet mask, then the subnet mask comes in. Okay, so again, we're not changing this in the lab, right? Everything should be set up already for your PLC. You should be, um, you can use the same steps in order to view the IP address of your computer and of the, uh, of the PLC, but everything should be set up already for you. Okay, this is just strictly if you're following this at home. Okay, let's hit OK. And OK. And we'll close this guy up. So now we should be set. Okay, so now uh, we're going back to our RS links. Okay, and then what I want you to do is I want you to click on communications. And we're going to configure a driver for the Ethernet. Okay, so we're going to click on configure driver. Okay, these guys, let's see if I can 
delete these guys out. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, you'll probably not have anything here, right? Because we just had that USB connection. Uh, so we're going to configure the driver for the Ethernet. So we're going to click on this drop down menu. We're going to go to Ethernet IP drivers. Click on this guy. And then hit Add New. Okay, you can just use this standard name here. We'll hit OK. Okay, and we're going to use the Ethernet connection um, that exists, that we just set up there, 192.168.1.123. Okay, we'll hit Apply and OK. Excellent, so now we have a new connection there for our PLC now. So we'll hit Close. Okay, excellent. Now, the next thing I want you to do uh, is open up your Studio 5000. Okay, we'll just open up our test project that we were working on before. Excellent. Okay, and then if you want, like, you can put in, like, a command prompt. So you can go to the command prompt. Um, and we set our, our, our IP address for the PLC. So we're going to ping that guy, and it was, what, 192.168.1.10, right? So let's ping it and see if we can talk to it. Okay, it looks good. So it looks like we're actually talking to uh, the PLC, so there is a connection to that guy. Okay, so let's close that command prompt up. That step's not needed. It's just if you wanted to check that you're actually talking to it. Okay, let's go to communications. Okay, again, you could go here to the drop-down menu, but we're going to try this from now on. Communications, who active? Okay, now we've got our Ethernet connection here. We're going to open this guy up. Nice. So there is our PLC at 192.168.10. Uh, okay, excellent. We can go just online or we can download the existing project. Let's download this guy just in case there's something else that was there. Okay, we'll hit download. Okay, done downloading. Uh, change controller back to remote mode. Sure. Looks good. Beautiful. Okay, so now we've been able to talk to the unit. We're now in uh, in remote run here. We can see the, the run mode is good. Controller's okay and the IO are okay. So let's do the same thing. Can we bring up our main program? Yes, we can. Okay, so that's cool. And let's see if we can go to our controller tags again. Okay, and remember these are our, our local data tags here. So let's click on, here let me bring up the other image. There we go. So let's click on these switches again and see whether they come in, right? So this is input uh, zero. And again, we're looking at this bit right here. So let's see if it comes in. Ah, nice, right on, okay. Um, and again, like I'm not talking to it over the, oh, that's really toyed. <laughs> um, I'm not talking to it over the USB. I am, I'm talking to it over the ethernet uh, connection there. Okay. So we've got the first bit and the second bit, right? Bit number three. Beautiful. Okay. So those guys are all cool. And let's see whether we can force those, uh, outputs as well. Right. So we have local, um, one output and we'll open this up so we can see all the bits here right so you can see the word here word and then you can see all the specific bits here as well okay so let's try and toggle 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 uh, that bit right there so output zero okay so we're changing it from a zero to a one ah very nice okay and let's do like a random one let's do uh output number nine so we're going to change it from a zero to a one Okay, click somewhere else. There she goes, beautiful. So that output is now live. It's hard to see with the lighting, um, but the uh, the terminal, or the terminal, the LED that corresponds to output number nine is also illuminated here as well. And as I change the inputs, then I don't know if you can see it, but the LEDs, it's very faint with this lighting. The LEDs are sequentially turning on up here on my actual PLC as well. So if I take the output number nine and turn it off now, now there's no LEDs illuminated in the bottom there.
close. We have two places to look. These teeny tiny LEDs, if you just have your PLC. If you have this Festo trainer here, then you're able to see the, um, the LEDs turning on here. And <clears throat> as you change these units here on the inputs, then you'll see that the, the LEDs are toggling here. And the LEDs that are here are corresponding to the outputs of the PLC. Cool. All right, so we've been able to communicate with our PLC over USB, and we've now set up, set up everything to talk to it over the Ethernet. Uh, next thing is to set up a basic program and then download it to our PLC, but we'll do that on the next video. All right, guys, thanks very much. And then um, save this video so that you can go back to it um, so that if you've lost communications, we can quickly go, go back to this video and set up either over USB or over Ethernet. Okay, thanks very much, guys. We'll see you in the next video.